Good morning and happy Friday, campers. Today we're going to do something a little different. Since everybody enjoyed the um, ultrasound tutorial, I thought, what best to start this way, um, but with another product tutorial. Stay tuned. Hi, everybody. So, um, I just bought this, um, pulse oximeter. It's probably backwards on your screen because my phone is backwards. Um, it is a SMD 600 vet veterinarian pulse oximeter. Um, if you don't know what a pulse oximeter is, um, it's basically a device that um, measures the oxygen saturation in your blood. Why is that important? Well, when you are, let's just say you have premature puppies or you have a puppy that's having a little bit of a transitional period after it's born and it can't really breathe very well and you got to get it through that transitional period, this here will let you know where you're at, how much oxygen to apply, and if you need to back off or increase on your oxygen. Now, for puppies, unless they're in an oxygen tent, um, you really don't want to give them high flow oxygen because you can blow out their lungs. That's not good for them. So um, most oxygen concentrators, I recommend like five liters per minute. Um, no more than that. You don't want it, it too pressurized for puppies' lungs. Um, I am an EMT. I have a background with oxygen administration and stuff like that. So I kind of sort of have a little bit of a step up knowing what to look for for an oxygen con um, oxygen concentrators and a pulse oximeter. But that's what this video is for, is to educate you and maybe add it or not add it to your breeding program or maybe suggest to somebody else who might be looking into it too. So let's get started. Breakfast waits for no one. All right, so the first thing you'll do, see when you get it out of the box, get it out of the box, I might take it out of the bag. You'll get this. So far in, on a um, personal inspection, it looks pretty good, right? really well together. When you first open it up, you're gonna have the little booklet. Um, I'm pretty much gonna wing this and I'm not gonna read the booklet just because I know how an oxygen um, Paul Fox in our works. All right, comes with batteries. Um, the link for this product will be in the description box, okay? If you're looking. This is basically no bigger than it is. It can fit in the palm of your hand. This one's pretty nice. Let me take it out of the bag. Um, we'll take the, yeah, the heck with it. We'll take the protective thing off of it. Here's your settings. And it's screwed in in the back, so I gotta go get a screwdriver now. Stand by. Okay, for this you will need a small Phillips head, preferably ones that you use for glasses. This is a micro Phillips head, okay? And we're gonna open this, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, they're moving pretty good. No one really drilled these in in the factory, so. one minute okay so once you get those off it opens up and I kind of like that safety feature where they should have these on remote controls for the kids seriously like I got eight kids okay my three youngest are on three under the age of four and this this here screwing the back of this onto a remote control is there parents out there you know what I'm talking about little kids like to take the back off the remote control and then you're you have a back end of remote control looks like this with two batteries in it and then you know if I throw it or drop it there goes your batteries this needs to be on the back of all remote controls people come on I like that ideas all right Let's put the batteries in it. That's nice that they come with batteries. It's usually batteries that don't hold, you know, a charge very long, but we'll give them a whirl. You ever notice that? The batteries that come with products are quite 
get crud batteries. Crap batteries. All right. Batteries are in. Let's make sure it works before. Yep. Make sure it works before we close it back up and go through all that again. All right. Screws in, stamp. And they just screw in like this. Really simple. My toddlers could probably do this, although it probably would be in several pieces before they were done. All right, right now it's giving me an error sensor off me message right here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, that means obviously my sensor's in the bag. So I'm gonna take the sensor out. Now this one here for an animal, for dogs, um, works a little differently than people. This goes on their ear. Um, there ain't many places on a dog where you can get a proper paw socks reading. Um, it's got to be a place, obviously, with very minimal hair, like their ear. Um, and it, the inside of the ear is actually the most skin other than the belly that's exposed on the dog. So I can understand why this would be the more appropriate way of getting a reading. Now, when you get it out of the box, I don't even have to read the directions. I know how to put this together just because when you, if you have a medical background around things, you, you this, this whole process of getting new toys is going to be so much simpler for you. But if you don't have a medical background, just read the instructions and do your homework and you'll be just as good as the rest of us. Okay. Uh, I'm going to wrap, unwrap this a little bit. And there's your there's your probe. See, I'm learning with you. This is the first time I uh, had this. Now this does only go in one way and usually most pulse oximeters will be that way. If you can see, uh, if it focuses, that would be wonderful. There's a little ridge right here. All right, there's a little uh, tongue. Oh my goodness. Do you see it? It's right there. Okay. So that only goes in one way. And if you look on here, there's a little groove in there. You're going to stick it with the... Uh, okay. okay. Oh, it just snaps in. That's really nice. Let's see about how easy it is to remove. Oh, it just pulls out. All right. So it just snaps in and pulls out. That's, uh, that's wonderful. Seems a little flimsy, though, but... Just watch how hard you pull, I guess. Oh, okay, I see. So when you pull it out, see these two little prongs on each side? Okay, when you pull it out, those things go in. So before you pull it out and you're yanking, just pull up this and it will release it. That's pretty nice. So you put it in and you pull and it releases it. All right, that's pretty nice. Let's carry on. Okay, so to put this on, you'll get this clip thing. Now, on a pulse oximeter, whether it's an animal or whether it's a human, um, there's always going to be two flat parts, and it's going to... And let me turn this on so I can show you. There's always, always going to be two flat parts. This here little red light is what takes your pulse oximeter. Ox oh my gosh. This little red dot is what monitors your pulse, pulse ox. It's Friday. It's the end of the week, folks. Sometimes my brain checks out. Um, but anyway, this is what monitors your pulse. And then this this here and together, that's what does it. So when you're putting this together, okay, you're not going to want to put them outwards like this. Okay, you're going to want to put them inwards. So make sure that the flat parts go inwards like that. The bigger flat parts go inwards, okay? And then, like that. All right? You want the light on the inside of the clip, not on the outside. So it's going to look like this. Okay? There we go. All right? Got that? Let me turn this. All right, there's a, there's a bunch of settings on here, which you can use your book for. All right. Um, 
there's a time and date, although the time and date was already set when I got it, so I didn't have to mess with that too much. But there are alarm settings, okay? Um, there is a setting on here where you can change uh, what you want to be alerted to, like the low, the lowest pulse socks reading that, you know, you would consider bad. And then you can change the upper number as well. Um, and then the same thing with the heart rate. You can change what you want to be alerted to. So I'll give you an instance. If you want to be alert, if you have this on one of your puppies that is in, you know, an incubator or whatever, um, you want to be alerted if their pulse comes down a, a below a certain point and then this will go off. Same thing with oxygen saturation. If their oxygen saturation says go, goes below 90, okay, you want to be alerted to that. Um, so that's really nice. You could also turn the alarm on or off. So that's that. That's the alarm for, there's no pulse, I'm not sensing nothing. And then you could turn that off then, okay? So we're gonna try it on in my ear. Even though this is a veterinarian pulse oximeter, it should still measure the pulse ox on my ear. So we'll try this. See how this goes. I have a really stuffy nose, it's allergy season, so. Who knows, it might even actually show low. I doubt it though. All right, so it's picking up my my pulse. And that's actually pretty good. Even though this is a veterinarian ultrasound machine, I know it's backwards, I apologize. This says 99% oxygen saturation and it's 88 uh, beats per minute for my pulse. And I'm sorry if you can't see that. Do you see that? Everything's backwards because my camera's backwards because I'm using the front camera on my phone, but you get the drift. So it's 85 for my pulse and 98, 99 for my pulse ox. For a human, that's excellent, especially just sitting here talking to you. Um, that's pretty good. I You could probably, as an EMT, okay, and I don't want to speak too soon, but this is this is pretty good. Um, I have a regular um, pulse oximeter at, in my um, cabinet. Um, it's one that goes on your finger. And when my kids are sick, trying to get that on their finger and letting them keep that on their finger is like pulling teeth, truly. Um, and this, as soon as you clip it on, it picks up right away, like within seconds. I'll show you that when it comes up. There you go. See that? Now it says 82 pulse, 99 pulse ox. Very cool. I like this. Um, this was about a hundred dollars on Amazon. I think it was like a hundred and twenty-nine ish. I'm not quite sure. So I really like this so far. Just playing around with it for a few minutes. I really, really like this. Um, why would you need this in your breeding program, you may ask. I'm going to shut this off just for now because I have the alarm on. And when it doesn't sense a pulse rate, it will start beeping. Um, which is really nice because if people have a puppy that they're, you know, trying to get going or they have an incubator, you can't always sit right next to that incubator all day long. You have other things to do, housework, family, whatever. You can set this where if it goes below a certain pulse rate for a dog, obviously not a human, but a dog, you can hear it and you can go take care of it accordingly. Same with the oxygen saturation, which is really super nice. Um, so far, I like this. I mean, let's talk about everything else it came with. It came with a USB port. Excuse me, micro USB. Um, that you can actually record the pulse rate and the oxygen saturation readings on here and then download them to your computer. Um, this manual pretty much tells you step by step how to do it. These uh, instructions are more informative than the ultrasound machine, let me tell you. So I'm not going to say all the stuff on here personally on this video. This this booklet is very informative on your settings and what to set it for and all kinds of stuff. And like I said, this is a veterinarian pulse oximeter, but as you've seen, you could also use it on your human uh, humans. Um, you just have to put it on your ear. I wonder if it'll do it on the, your phone, your finger too. Let me let's check that out. See if it'll do your finger. And remember, um, 
One other thing I want to mention. Hold on a minute. Let me see if it'll pick up on my finger. Yep. Give it a second. There you go. It's picking up my finger too. So, 97, 99, 98 is normal pulse ox reading for a human and 80 pulse rate is normal. So you can do this on your finger or your ear. We just tried both. Now that's for a human. This is obviously for a dog. Um, actually, this does rabbits, dogs, cats. Um, rabbits, dogs, cats. And there's some other animals in here, but those are the main ones. Anything with exposed skin such as an ear, you can use this on. Um, and as you can see, it works on humans, so it probably will work on pretty much any animal that has at least a, a small patch of the exposed skin where you can have access to the front and the back, particularly a flap or an ear or something like that. Um, all right, um, you got your USB port. And um, that's really all that comes in this kit. And that's the end of it. It doesn't come with this. I had to include that. Um, it, co it comes with batteries. I'm really happy about that. That was really nice. Um, so far, I really like this. Um, we'll have to use it on one of the dogs in order for me to give my full unbiased opinion on it. But so far, unboxing and you know initial product review, it works really well. It works really well on your, a human's ear, so I can imagine this is probably going to pick up a dog and no problem. Um, so... Yeah, I really like this. Um, it's like $128, I think, or $129, something around that RAM. Definitely worth the money. Um, it, like I said, it works. Um, and it picks up actually faster than my pulse oximeter for humans that I have in my house. You usually have to sit there and press on it and wait like five seconds, ten seconds. It takes forever. But this one picks up right away. So, um, yeah, definitely like this definitely get it um you know don't ever say oh if you say oh well i never have puppies that have problems or i never have puppies that have this problem or i never have you know premature puppies listen never say never because never could happen tomorrow and then you're like shit i should have bought that um i think that Anybody who's going to be closed-minded about the breeding process should probably not be breeding because you never stop learning. Never. Uh, I've been breeding for 14 years and I learn new stuff all the time, okay? Um, I definitely know more than I did when I first started, but I definitely have a lot more to learn as well. Um, one more thing I want to uh, mention about the pulse oximeter is, and this is for humans as well, never, ever, ever, ever use this on a cold finger. You're not going to get an accurate reading on a cold limb or a cold finger or, or for dogs, a cold ear. If you, uh, it just gives you uh, false readings. Um, we were always told on the ambulance that if your patient's fingers are cold, particularly with people with um, congestive heart failure, they will have cold limbs. Um, people with diabetes, they will have cold limbs. Try to warm up their fingers before you put the pulse socks on them. And usually we do one of these numbers with their hands and try to warm up their hand really good. Um, same with the dogs. If your dog has a cold ear or wherever you're trying to use it on, particularly just use the ears. Um, try to warm up that ear if their ear is cold or if you're getting a weird reading that you're not sure of that don't make any sense, warm up that ear make sure that ear isn't cold. Best advice I can give you while using this machine, um, I don't know if it says that in the manual, but I'm telling you as a, you know, um, someone with a medical background to make sure your limbs or your ears are warm when you use this product. Very, very, very important. Also, one more thing I'd like to add, I just thought of, um, when you're using them, this machine, some people would ask, well, why should I get this? Um, you know, I'll just use oxygen. Listen, this is going to give you a snapshot of what's going on with your puppy. Um, giving a dog oxygen without actually knowing their numbers is kind of like giving insulin to a patient without knowing what their glucose is. Okay, um, you know, you're, you're not doing them any justice. Um, even though oxygen isn't, you know, oxygen is fairly harmless for someone that's oxygen compromised or having um, an inability to hold oxygen levels or the, you know, stuff like that, you are going to want to know those numbers. So if your puppy's 
oxygen saturation, for instance, is a 70, and you're giving them, you know, as high flow oxygen as you possibly can, like for a puppy with an oxygen concentrator, like five liters per minute, you're going to somehow want to try to get that puppy in some kind of oxygen tent or some kind of some kind of device where you're increasing the oxygen concentration and not just having them say like in an open um, an open um, incubator or something with an open container. You're going to want to have to isolate them in a container, um, preferably with breathing holes because you want the carbon dioxide to come out. But you want to try to create some kind of oxygen tent for them and try to increase their oxygen saturation number higher than 70 because 70 isn't really good. If, you're, if the puppy's organs can't get enough oxygen, if the puppy can't breathe properly to feed its organs oxygen, the puppy ain't going to grow, the puppy's going to be failure to thrive, and the puppy will eventually be dead. So um, that's why I think this is so important for anybody that's a serious breeder. Hey everybody. Um, so I haven't been able to finish this video all week, so I'm like, I'm going to finish this video. So, um, this here, I wanted to give it an honest review on it before I made a, an opinion. Um, this here you can buy on Amazon. The link to this will be in the description section. Um, this has been my experience with it. I've used it for about a week now. Um, it works amazing on humans. That's my conclusion. Um, when you turn it on. All right, um, you can put it on the ear or you can put it on the finger. It does amazing catching um, blood, pre um, blood pressure, Ugh. pulse rate and pulse socks for a human. And um, that's about accurate. <laughs> for a human, it's probably backwards on the video. Um, but when I use it for the dog's ear, this is for either the dog's ear or their tongue, getting this on a dog's tongue when they're fully conscious is next to impossible, let me just tell you. Um, however, I've tried it on their ear and I've noticed that the ear skin is too thin. Um, so I tried to put it back towards their, their meatier part of their ear and it tends to work a little better. Um, this also um, works between their toes. Yeah, you heard me, between their toes, the webs of their toes. Um, the t skin between the webs of their toes is a little thicker and gives, them a li gives it a little bit more surface area to give a good measurement. So this is technically for a dog's ear or their tongue. However, I have found in practice that this works best um, between the webs of the toes. Um, or on the thicker part of the ear towards the base of the skull. Um, I have yet to check, I have yet to use this on any puppies. I don't have puppies due for another three weeks. Um, so I might make another updated review video to this once I, get, I have puppies and I actually get to use it on what I bought it and intended it for. Um, but as far as adult dogs, it's um, hit or miss, okay? Um, Again, dachshunds ears are a lot thinner than probably a bit larger breed dogs. So, um, but um, one, if you get it between the webs of the feet or the the uh, thicker part of the ear towards the base, it tends to work a little better. Um, I also noticed that if it's a really hairy ear, it doesn't really read it very well. So you have to have both sides of the base of the ear shaved, like that little part shaved on both sides. It doesn't read through hair very well. Um, so that is my review on this machine right here. Um, do I think it's a good buy? Yes, I do. Because at the very least, if you can't get it to work on your dogs, you have an amazing pulse oximeter for your family, for your kids. This works the same on your humans. So, um... I, I think it's a definite buy for $123. I mean, it's a no-brainer for me. It's it's only $123. But I think it's definitely a good buy. Um, like I said, I want to use it on a puppy, see how it works. Because if you know, puppies don't have any hair on their ears when they're born. So, um, like I said, I'm going to have to make another review video about this um, to see how this works on puppies. Um, 
but for the adults, again, it is as I said. Um, both sides of the ear have to be shaved, inner and outer, to use this. It doesn't work on hair. Um, and, excuse me, between the base of their toes, between the webbing, seems to be the best spot to pick up their paw sock symmetry the best, in, in my experience, um, using this product now for a week. Um, so that's my review on this. I wish I had more to say. It's pretty simple and I mean it's it's a good buy um, whether you get it to work on your dogs or not. It works on humans so you could sec use it secondarily as a pulse oximeter for your family. Um, so even if you bought it and you couldn't get it to work, um, you could still get it to work on yourselves. Um, so that's it for this video. Sorry it took so long to get this out. Um, I usually try not to go a week without, you know, getting a video out there. But it's just been a crazy week. My weeks are hectic most days. Most weeks. So, um, thank you for watching. Please support us by hitting that like box. Um, that like and uh, subscribe to us. That lets YouTube know we're good people. And that we're doing what we should be doing as YouTubers. Um, if you like us and you want to follow us more, you can follow us on um, Instagram and Facebook and um, right here on YouTube as well. Thank you for watching and take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.